Hey guys, it's Phil and Jeff from Multiple Applications Group M7 Airsoft. And we are here at the Spartan Imports booth at SHOT Show 2012, hanging out with Milsim Events and Spartan Imports. And you're watching Mako TV. Hey, it's Claymore, back hijacking Mako TV. I got a little help hijacking it with M7. Who do we have here? Hey guys, this is Jeff, or Fireman from M7. Hey, this is Phil, or Darkness from M7. Right on. You guys enjoying the show so far? Absolutely. It's yeah. it's amazing. It's badass. What was your highlight? What was your highlight so far? Ooh, highlight so far. Uh, that's tough. That's tough. I I would say. Uh, have you seen the Cry Girls? I have not. They'll make you cry. Highlight so far. We're headed <laughs> we're headed down the Cry. So mine will be next when we the go back to the Cry booth. Cry. That'll be my highlight with them. I would say I would say probably my highlight is uh, just the community in general. I came here with one expectation, and I'm walking away with a completely different one. Uh, <laughs> Who did you introduce me to yesterday? I introduced you to Chris Costa. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Awesome guy. Awesome He's guy. so laid back. I was pretty impressed with his demeanor and the, just the way he was. Oh, yeah. So where are we standing right now? We are standing at the Voodoo Tactical booth. As yes. You can see. As you can see, the latest ATAX gear. Look at this. And the reason why this is so cool, ladies and gentlemen, is look at the webbing. Look. It's matched ATAX. See, most gear companies, they will just get the, the ATAX Cordura and they'll do Coyote strips, Voodoo, match them. So here on the Matrix Voodoo bag, we also have the ATAX strapping. From what I understand, this is first run strapping and it's only printed on one side, it'll eventually be printed on two. So, um, what, what else about, what'd you guys do last night? <laughs> Well, I heard some stories. <laughs> so there's another convention in town, and uh, we kind of wandered over to the Hard Rock Casino, and apparently there's an adult film industry convention going on. So we kind of wandered there and saw some nice gun nuts over there. I won't say I who it was. I think we saw the Cry Girls. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if they were the same girls or not. But. No, the guys were crying. With their yeah, but the guys were boys. crying. So are we having fun in Vegas? Absolutely. Yeah. A ton of fun. This is my first time in Vegas, and I'm blown away. This is this amazing. This guy's like 500 bucks up. Yeah, I'm doing well on the roulette table. I'm going back today. And, wow. and you know what? I haven't gambled anything yet, not even in my head. Oh. <laughs> i got to get the money for new gear. Right, right. Oh, so gear coming out. I need the money for it. So, so you got plans for something already? I'm working on it. I'm trying to see where I want to go. The new, you see people are going with smaller plate carriers and running the battle belts. So that's kind of what we're looking at is how we're going to, push that right. because we started doing that now we're seeing it more and more in the industry we see a lot of the setups here of the real guys wearing these around you see it being used overseas and we noticed the trend is going towards yeah the whole first line second line setup you know having a little extra mags on your on your first line and, and not worrying about how everything second, on your second line. split seconds out here and there you're saving so much time by the way you're placing your gear now right. it's amazing you don't see the big loadouts anymore. I mean, even even you look at almost all the gear guys anymore. You don't see big plate carriers anymore. You see very small plate carriers. Everything at Cry's booth was small, right. very tiny stuff. That's kind of what I noticed too. Is the soft armor is actually gone? Is the size of the hard armor? Yeah. And you're only really wearing the protection of the hard armor, maybe an inch over coverage on your soft armor. So I, it's, I think they're going more for mobility now. It's all about mobility and operator comfort because the technology over the last couple of years has developed where we can fit mags on there. You can stack mags on top of mags um, and you run a battle belt. Uh, so if you have to lose the plate carrier for whatever reason or you know, helo, car, whatever you're riding in, you can still carry the same amount of ammo, but your mobility increases. That's very good. Uh, let's talk about Milsim for a second. What do you think about the future of Milsim now based on what you've seen here at the SHOT Show? Uh, I think Milsim's gonna explode. I mean, I think we've all seen it coming. The, the, those of us that are that have been deep in it and have really been pushing it, um, but talking with all these brands, like I was saying before, my my interpretation of coming here, uh, and then talking with, well, like you guys were saying, Surefire, talking with Voodoo, uh, talking with all these gear companies that we drool over having their gear, right. and they want to talk to us and they want to talk to you about Milsim. Yeah, I've kind of noticed that Airsoft and Milsim has been taking more of a, uh, a less than lethal weapon approach than kids running around with, with guns. And there's a lot more respect this year than there was last year and the previous years before. So um, personally, I think it's growing. I think it's being more socially acceptable to tell somebody in the real steel industry that you do run Airsoft weapons for training. 
And what really helped out, I believe, was, uh, you know, we've been using force-on-force -on -force training for a while, and we push it on the guys we know. But recently, if anybody's been on the Internet, it's seen Travis Haley finally announced, hey, it's great for force-on-force -force training. You learn your real steel techniques, you mimic it on your airsoft, you use it force-on-force, -force, and then you transition that to your real steel. And it all it works. It combines. Yeah, copy that. Muscle so, memory, mechanics, and everything is the same. Your loadout could be the same. Your mags are the same. You're just shooting a six millimeter projectile that's less than lethal, and and still getting your training in. You can do in your house. Yeah. And I think the big thing that airsoft that it's finally starting to click with these manufacturers is airsoft isn't. It, it, it is a transition sport. It's a transition in and out of military. Kids come play airsoft, love it, realize they love it go join the military guys coming out of the military miss it and starting a family have real jobs so they play airsoft on the weekends yeah. so it's that transition we can transition people into it and we can transition people out of it you're right I've heard stories of being good therapy um, not only good therapy but uh, the camaraderie with your friends and running around and inducing combat stress without the underlying fear of getting your head shot off it means a lot and uh, kind of brings you down off that uh, in country high, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I agree. Definitely agree. Anything else before we leave the show here? No, we're going to have some fun tonight since it's the last night. Yeah, what's going on tonight? Are you going anywhere tonight? I think we're going to go to the Magpul after party with you guys. With us guys? With Mako TV and Mako TV and Bushman and MSE. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, the interview and thanks for coming and thanks for hanging out with us at SHOT Show. Thank you guys. Thanks for bringing thank us. Thanks for everything. Thanks for bringing us. No thanks for uh, coming to SHOT Show 2012. Again, Meco TV is being hijacked. <laughs>